Good morning, everybody. So uh, it is very good opportunity for me to be here to uh, give an introduction on the ICHE to be R3 guidelines of China. So actually, China didn't join ICH too long ago, just joined in uh, June 2017. So China is still in the process of implementing the ICHE to be R3 guidelines now. So uh, just because this, I think is much more, uh, there are much more useful information and uh, information to be shared with you during the transition period for China from the uh, paper reporting and the transition to the ICHE to B. So the views and opinion expressed today only are the opinions on my, by myself. Uh, I will go through the following agenda. First, background implementation plans and standards for the China ICH E2B, and uh, go through the electronic submission of IND safety reporting, electronic submission of post-marketing safety reports, and uh, at the end, there will be a conclusion on the E2B R3 challenges in China. Uh, just like I mentioned, China has joined ICH as its eighth regulatory member in June 2017. In order to accelerate the pace in regulatory reform, China Regulatory Authority will need to follow the following uh, ICH second tier guidelines, including ICH M4, ICH E2A, ICH E2B, ICH M1, and ICH E2D. Uh, and also, there are more than uh, 10 or 20 30 uh, ICH guidelines we also need to follow in the next several years. Uh, currently, the China Health Authority is called NMPA, National Medical Products Administration, and uh, belong to the NMPA, there are two different departments, which is CDE and the CDR, Center for Drug Evaluation and the Center for Drug Re-Evaluation. Re uh, the Center for Drug Evaluation is responsible for uh, reviewing the life cycle documents for the IND clinical trial application and also to approve the clinical trial application. And the Center for Drug Re-Evaluation -Evalu is responsible to review and approval the life cycle documents for the post-marketing products. Of course, among all the documents, there are uh, safety-related documents like ICSRs and uh, aggregate periodic reports. Uh, currently, uh, in China, we have released uh, China E2B R2 specification, which was released in July 2018. Uh, uh, but now, as per the CDE request, we should submit ICHE to be R3 XML format to CDE. So uh, now, since there are no finalized China ICHE to be R3 guideline, we follow ICHE to be R3 format with some of the specified fields required to be submitted in Chinese. So uh, currently, the draft China E2B R3 specification has been released by China. Uh, it is actually a second round draft documentation, and the, the China E2B R3 specification is still under reviewing by the industry as well as the health authority. So actually, the slides uh, provided today is a little bit with the handbook in your, uh, in your hand because uh, just before I departed, the China Health Authority uh, published the second draft for the China R3 E2B specification. So I will bring you the most updated information today. So uh, let's look at uh, how the IND safety reports change uh, before, the chi before China joined ICH and uh, how it changed since China joins ICH. Uh, original process before we join ICH, if there is an SAE occurred during a clinical trial, we need to uh, fill a paper NMPA SAE report and uh, use fax or EMS 
uh, to the submit to the health authority, which lacks the universal tracking system. And also, I think it is quite inefficient for the reviewers to review the safety-related information. And since joining uh, ICH in July 2017, uh, the CDE announced that for all the suicides occurred in clinical trial, we should do the expedited reporting to submit to CDE via E2B. So uh, during May the 1st, 2018 to April 30th, 2019, CDE provided one year transition period to allow E2B XML R2 file to still be submitted to CDE. And uh, since May the 1st, 2019, for suicides occurred during clinical trial, we should submit E2B XML R3 format to CDE. And uh, uh, there is a language uh, requirement that all the E2B format submitted to CDE should be in Chinese. So uh, to fulfill the E2A expedited reporting requirements, the XML submitted to Chinese uh, health authority can be submitted in English first within seven or 15 days. And uh, the Chinese version should be submitted in additional 15 days. Uh, currently, for the XML submitted to CDE, we allow both gateway submission and also uh, the sponsor can upload the CDE, uh, the XML file to the sponsor's portal, upload to the CDE. By using the gateway submission or the portal submission, it allows the data reviewers use the data visualization and also the analytical tool for review and the tracking all the SUSAs during the clinical trials for all the uh, INDs in China. So also for uh, other scenarios, uh, we also need to follow the expedited reporting to the CDE. Uh, if there is an suicide occurred in a blinded study, the health authority suggested us to break blind before we report to the health authority. After break blind, if the report is related to, pl to the placebo, it does not uh, meet the reporting requirements as a suicide report. If the after break blind, the report is related to the sponsor's own study drug, then the case should be submitted to CDE as an uh, expedited SUSA report. Uh, and also the expedited reporting, SUSA reporting, uh, is applicable for not only the SUSAs occurred in China, but also the SUSAs occurred uh, in foreign countries. So if there is a compound which was approved in CDE for a clinical trial, then for the SUSAs for the same compound, no matter it was occurred in China or outside of China, it should all be reported as an expedited SUSA report to CDE via the E2B XML formats. And for other observations also mentioned in ICH E2A, the expected uh, serious adverse reaction with an increase in the rate of occurrence, which is judged by the clinical importance or significant hazard to the patient population, such as LOE with medical product used in treating life-threatening disease, and other major safety findings from a newly completed animal study, such as carcinogenicity. These information should be reported to CDE via email in an expedited manner which the when the sponsors know this scenario. Uh, if in a clinical trial the SUSA report is determined to be related to an active comparator from other MAH, the CDE requires us to report the SUSA reports to other MAH as soon as possible. Then the other MAH should follow the expedited reporting method to the health authority also. The responsible uh, is the owner of the 
active comparator. Or if the medical institution already knows the SUSA report is related to which product, the medical institution can also report to the CDR, which is the post-marketing health authority directly. So uh, previously is the general transition how the IND safety reports uh, transi uh, changes bef after we joined ICH. And now let's review how the safety reports for post-marketing changes after China joins ICH. Uh, currently, we are still d using an online reporting, the ma menu human data entry in the ADR monitoring system. The ADR monitoring system is up, up versioning uh, now and uh, will be up versioning in a long period from now on. Uh, the ADR monitoring system currently uh, changed its name. It's called Drug Address Event Reporting System, their system. The final uh, aim is to up version the system to accept the E2B XML S3 report and also the health authority can provide the MAH if they receive the adverse drug reaction to the MAH product, which called the feedback reports in China to the MAH directly in the system and in a timely manner. So let's look at uh, how the, their system upgrade. Uh, sorry, this is a new slide. <laughs> yeah. Uh, before uh, July 2018, the ADR monitoring system is being up versioning to a new system called their system uh, because since July 2018, China Health Authority commits to follow the ICH E2D for post-marketing reports. Uh, previously, in China, uh, the definition for ADR, adverse drug reaction, is uh, the untoward medical occurrence within only normal, u normal dose of the product. But to follow the ICHE2D, now we also collect the uh, medical, untoward medical occurrence uh, and adverse effects like with medication errors, off-label use, etc. These should all be collected and reported to the health authority. And uh, uh, since uh, July 2018 till the end of this year, we are expecting, we are upversioning the data system, try to accept the E2B R3 format document. Uh, now the CDR already calls some of the pilot companies like the experienced MNCs and experienced CROs to do the pilot testing. If the CRO can provide the E2B R3 format and uh, to try gateway connection with the data system, it is expected by January 2020 uh, if the company has the ability to submit the E2B report for post-marketing products, the their system can accept the uh, E2B R3 format. Of course, the menu entry, the online reporting, is still acceptable in the their system for both uh, domestic cases and for also the foreign cases. And uh, by July 2022, totally uh, two and a half a year transition period, the post-marketing safety reports must be submitted to CDR via E2B R3 for all the post-marketing cases. So uh, totally about the post-marketing safety reports does not have a transition period for R2 XML. We just transition from the online reporting to the R3 uh, reporting, totally two and a half years transition period. Uh, it is expected finally the data system can have a 
full function which can do the risk management and uh, support the MAH to do the PV assessments. Uh, now I would like to go through some of the detailed specifications for both IND safety reporting and uh, the post-marketing safety reporting. Uh, so when I first learned these technical sp specifications and implementation guide in the ICHE2B, I also found it is very boring. It is very hard for me to learn these technical specifications. But actually, after I learned, I think the technical specification and the implementation guide is both important for our PV colleagues who do the case processing, also very important for the IT and the BT and the system developers. If we know the technical specification and we can have the same language with our BT colleague to help us to do the system configuration and we will have the and we will know why the case should be processed like this and uh, better help us to do maybe the signal detection in the safety system also to help us meet the compliance for the regulatory requirements. So as I mentioned, currently we need to uh, follow the ICH-E2B S3 format to do the IND SUSA reporting to the CDE but there are several of the local requirements upon actual process during the processing to the SUSA reporting to CDE. For the data element E.I.9, the identification of country where the reaction and event occurred, this is an optional field in the ICH E2B S3 specs. The data elements captures the country where the reaction occurred now it is actually a um, required and mandatory field by the CDE in actual cases. All the cases submitted to CDE via E2B R3 should have this field entered because uh, the reviewers would more focus on uh, whether the event occurred within China or occurred in foreign countries to help them do some analysis of the, event, uh, the, of the adverse reactions. And for the field G.K.3.1, authorization and application number, it is also an optional field by ICH E2B R3 specification. The data elements captures the authorization application number of the medicinal product for the country where it was obtained when the case report is sent to that country. Uh, just like what I said, if a compound got the clinical trial application, in under CDE, then the sponsor should report all the SUSAs for the same compound, no matter it occurs in domestic or occurs uh, in foreign countries. So for this field, we should uh, configure all the CTA numbers approved by CDE. If for foreign SUSAs, uh, we also submit to CDE, the field should be uh, configured with the same compound which already was approved under CDE. And for if there are many of the clinical trial application for the same compound already approved by CDE, we rank the clinical trial application number associated with this SUSA first. And for H.1 case narrative including clinical cause, therapeutic measures, outcome, and additional relevant information, also uh, another field with the case comments which the sponsor put the medical assessment for the case analysis. Uh, the language should be uh, Chinese for both local and foreign, domestic and foreign SUSAs but uh, in order to fulfill the expedited reporting as per E2A, it is allowed we can submit the English XML file to uh, CDE within seven days for fatal life threatening SUSA and 15 days for other SUSAs. And a Chinese version should be submitted in additional 15 days. Uh, this helps uh, many of the MNC's multinational company in China to fulfill the regulatory compliance because uh, for the MNCs, the safety database is globalized. Uh, the data entry always processing by a central uh, 
uh, group in English, so we can submit English format first, and then when the case go back to the local uh, pharmacovigilance team, we can translate the relevant information and submit to the CDE in another 15 days. Uh, so there are not too much requirements for the IND safety report currently. Uh, and uh, the po for the electronic submission for postmarking safety reports, uh, just like what I said, uh, the, draft I the draft China E2B S3 specification has been published by the CDR. The first draft for the comments published on May the 29th, and uh, in the first uh, draft, there are totally 35 data elements with local technical specification and uh, 11 new data elements by regional requirements. So uh, the CDR organized many of the communication meeting with uh, the experienced like MR MNCs and the CROs to listen to our uh, suggestions. Uh, we think that uh, the totally 35 data elements with local technical specification is too much for uh, is too much because at initial China emphasized too much on the localized uh, requirements, but does this does not meet the harmonization principle uh, by the ICH. So uh, we think if the elements does not support too much on the case uh, signal detection and the case review for the ICSRs. Uh, we don't suggest too many local technical specification. So in order to better communicate and exchange safety information with other ICH memberships, the China Health Authority CDR provided the second draft for comments uh, just before I come to Korea, which was published on August 23rd. It is still under the reviewing by the health authority and the companies. In this version, no data elements with local technical specification required any further, and there are totally 19 new elements required by regional requirements. And uh, this version, E2B R3 specification, fit for both the IND and the post-marketing safety report submission in China. So looking forward to the China E2B R3 specification to be finalized soon, so we can uh, able to submit the E2B R3 reports to the CDR early next year. So I will go very quick to the technical specifications here. These are the 35 data elements with technical, local technical specification in the first draft, but these fields no longer required in the second draft. So like for C1.1, uh, C11, the sender's safety report unique identifier, in the ICH E2B guidance, the element's value should follow country code, company, or regulator name, and the report name. Uh, originally, it was mentioned that for domestic case, the country, the, the rules should be country code, social credit code. This is a very uh, localized Chinese social credit code and the case number, but we suggest that the elements should not be changed to a uh, China local social credit card, uh, credit code because the comp the rules should be the same for all the ICH memberships. And also there are many of the field like sender's given name, sender's street, uh, state, province, and the telephone. These uh, information are just optional in the ICH guideline, but these are originally required by the Chinese Health Authority. Now this field is no longer required. These are the same uh, for the patient DOB, sex, 
state of the start of the reaction or event, duration, outcome, and uh, identification where the country reaction occurred, all these fields are optional in the ICHE2B. And originally, it is mentioned as required by the CDR. After several meetings with the uh, MNCs and uh, several meetings with the local companies, we suggest this to be canceled. So uh, these fields, the new elements by regional requirements are the final uh, uh, mentioned in the second draft of the China E2B guidelines. We can look at these regional requirements, new elements. Uh, so all these fields uh, have the code with CN, which is a new data element required by the CDR, like the report source C1CN.1. This is a required field uh, for the post-marketing sources. The allowed code is one an, uh, a number, so the field uh, shows whether the, uh, where the report comes from for the post-marketing cases, like regulatory authority case, uh, whether the report comes from the patients or the friends, whether the uh, safety report comes from the medical institution, business licensee, literature, or the post-marketing studies, and uh, others. And for another field, C1CN2, re report type, as I mentioned, the China's uh, E2B specification fits for both IND safety reports and also the post-marketing safety SUSA reports. So this field is added to specify whether this is a domestic pre-market report or a domestic post-market report or whether this is foreign pre-market or foreign post-market reports. And for C1, CN3, uh, this is an optional field, but if the, this is a uh, post-market report, which uh, is the code is 1-2 or 2-2, two, two, then uh, the suspect should be identified with MAH information. And we still add email address for the reporter as an optional field. And for DCN1 and DCN2, these two fields uh, applies for the domestic case and the foreign case respectively. As uh, there are 56 nations in China, so here if the, uh, this is a domestic case and we should enter which nation the subject come from. And if this is a foreign case, we should provide ethnic here. Uh, also, there are many optional new fields for the uh, China E2B to show some of the information of the patient or the subject. Uh, DCN3, DCN4, uh, CN5, and uh, CN6 uh, represents the name of the medical institution, business license org organization, or the subject's nationality, phone call, or the description of the pregnancy details. Uh, note the description of the pregnancy details is an optional and the free text field. If there are any free text field which the medical terms cannot be represented by the major or Hudra code, then the information should be used in Chinese. This field is only used for mother case for the pregnancy mother information to describe whether any past pregnancy de details or current pregnancy details and outcome provided for the, inf for the patients. Mm. Uh, regarding the product information, there are some of the new elements required here. Uh, the GKCN1 generic name, this should also be used in Chinese uh, if this is a domestic case to describe the product generic name. And the GKCN2 relevant medical device, if the adverse drug reaction is related to also a medical device, 
possibly related to, to the medical device, the field should be entered with Chinese for the medical device information. And uh, uh, GKCN3 is to specify whether the suspect product is the MAH's own product. Uh, enter here yes and no. If this is yes, there will be some more required field to provide assessment for the suspect product in the next slides. And GKCN4, uh, this is to provide the CTA number or NDA number for pre-market reports, we enter the clinical trial application number approved by the CDE. And for the post-marketing reports, we enter the NDA number when submit the report to CDR. Uh, so uh, if for the MAH's own suspect product, uh, the MAH is responsible to provide more assessments for the suspect product. There are some of the new fields for event listedness. The event listedness is not an E2B field by the ICH E2B specification, but uh, here it is a required field if the suspect product is the MAH's own uh, suspect product. The MAH should uh, provide assessments for the events based on the approved label in China, whether the event is listed or unlisted. Uh, same scenario applies to the, the challenge results. The element is not a an E2B field in the ICH E2B S3 specification, but in China it is required for the MAH's own suspect product to uh, indicate whether the subject was rechallenged with the drug and the known outcome. And regarding the product expiration date, uh, so if the MAH knows the lot number, the field should be filled with the expiration date. This is an also uh, this is also not a. Uh, required it to be filled by the ICH specification. So China added this to collect the expi exp expiration date information. Uh, th these two fields added to collect the primary report or the MAH source of assessment and the results of source documents. The two fields only required for domestic post-marketing reports because in China for the domestic post-marketing reports for the causality assessment, we used the six degree causality assessment which was certainly related, probable, possible, unlikely, unaccessible and conditional or unclassified. So for all the, uh, for all the ADR reports or serious ADR reports we submitted for the local domestic post-marketing reports, we should indicate the primary reporter's causality assessment for the reaction and the MAH's causality for the adverse events. Uh, here, China CDR also provide how to uh, map the two degree classification related and unrelated map to the six degree uh, causality assessment because for many MNCs, uh, they use related or unrelated for the causality assessment. If, the, uh, if it is determined as re related, then it should be mapped to possible and if it is uh, determined to be unrelated, it should be mapped to unlikely related for the domestic post-marketing reports. So for the language requirements, as what I've said previously, for the relevant data fields, if it is pr free text, which cannot be interpreted by standard codes such as the medical institution, business organization name, drug brand name or generic name, formulation, routes, uh, marketing authorization holder, manufacturer name, medical device, narrative of the adverse reaction, autopsy result, pregnancy information, etc. All this information should be filled with Chinese language.
So uh, this is a short conclusion. So actually, China does not join ICH too many time, too much time, but China uh, Health Authority uh, pushes to follow many of the ICH guidelines, of course, including the ICH E2A, E2B, and E2D. So the change for E2B R3 impacted the way the MAH capture and report information in drug safety database, which means for the multinational companies already have the uh, very mature safety database, they should still upgrade the safety database. Maybe they can use the BFC tools or how to upgrade it to meet the Chinese health authority requirements both the functional team like uh, drug safety units or the pharmacovigilance team should work with the IT and the BT technologies to uh, have the same language and to know how to configure the safety database. And for small companies or local MAHs in China, since previously uh, we don't require they have a very mature safety database. We still use the online reporting. So currently, they should start to uh, generate the E2B R3 compliant system. And upon our previous, it takes at least six months to a year for the MAH to move to an R3 compliant system. Otherwise, the qualified CROs should be connected to meet the compliance. So language is still a big challenge for the case processing, especially for the multinational companies uh, to how to meet the Chinese health authority requirements. And the, uh, the last challenge I think is for the Chinese health authority NMPA, how to develop uh, and IDMP because there are too many traditional Chinese medicine. We are also not sure about the ingredients, etc. So how to develop the material, uh, the IDMP is still a big challenge. So that's the end of my topic. Thank you all. Thank you.